Hello and welcome to another Tips and Tricks. In this video, I would like to talk about managing your city's budget. I would like to mainly talk about how you can improve your expenses or, you know, decrease your expenses. And I'm also going to touch uh, the subject of uh, managing your incomes to slightly raise your incomes. Now, if you are playing with the unlimited money mod, then this is obviously not going to concern you. But if you are playing with pretty much the vanilla settings, or even with some mods, but you are still playing with the limited money, you still need to keep an eye on your uh, city's treasury, then you might uh, take some information from this video. Now I'm first going to talk about optimizing your services, which is basically the first column in the, in the budget tab. Then I'm going to talk about the public transport. I'm not really going to talk at length about where you should put your traffic uh, lines, where you should put your public transport lines and stuff. I'm only going to talk about how you can optimize the expenses connected to public transport. Then I will talk about infrastructure, which is, in my opinion, the most important uh, point in all of this. And then I will talk a bit about your city's income. This is something you cannot really influence that much, but it is still a big part of your overall uh, budget uh, balance. All right, so let's take a look at the services first. All right, so as I said, the services are basically all these items in the first column in the budget tab in the economy window. Now, before I go talk about the individual services, let's just mention one very important aspect of the budgeting in this game. If you have the budget set for these individual services to 100%, the buildings are actually the cheapest or the ratio between efficiency and budget is actually the best. If you put the budget for all of these or for one of these uh, to 50%, the building is only going to be 25% efficient. And similarly, if you're going to put it to 150, the budget, then it's only going to be 125% efficient. This basically means that if you are going to cut the budget for, for example, electricity by half to 50%, then you are going to cut the production of electricity by four or four times. This means that the building is actually going to be more expensive. You're going to pay a lot more for the electricity production that you are producing per one megawatt, for example. And this applies for the all of these services, so for the number of trucks, uh, number of ambulances, fire trucks, even students, parks, efficiency, and so on. All right, so as I said, that's very important, and you do want to have all these budgets to 100%. There are some exceptions, I'm going to talk about it. Let's move on to electricity. So when it comes to electricity, the best thing you can do for your city is to build a fusion power plant. Now, why? Because the fusion power plant is the cheapest when it comes to the power output for your city or the ratio between power output and upkeep. As you can see, the power output, the number for megawatts is exactly the same as the upkeep cost a week, which basically means that one megawatt is produced for one upkeep cost. Now that's very good. If we look at the, all the other power plants in the city, we can see that nuclear power plant costs a lot of money per week, but uh, power output is way lower than the fusion power plant. It's even worse with the wind, wind turbine, for example, because it produces a lot less power for kind of a lot of money. Obviously, the power output is going to be less if you're not going to put it into the you know, windy area. And it applies even to the DLC, Green Cities DLC power plants. They are actually even more expensive because you know they are green. Now, when it comes to power lines, you also want to limit the number of these. You want to keep your cities kind of compact, so you don't need to build that many long power lines. The upkeep, to put it into perspective, is actually even more than some of the most basic roads in the game. So, kind of expensive. Now, as you could see, I do have the budget for electricity at 50%, and I did say that it's actually the least effective uh, budget option. But that's just because I'm not using all that power from the fusion power plant. As you can see, my city consumption is, I think, yeah, 1600 and electricity production from this power plant is uh, 4000. So you can imagine that I don't need the full power output. 
from the fusion power plant but still it's much cheaper to do this with the fusion power plant but if you don't have a fusion power plant then you only want to have the number of power plants that you actually need don't overproduce electricity and don't put the electricity budget to anything else than 100 percent as i said i have it at 50 because i have the fusion power plant and it's still much cheaper all right let's move on so what I said for the electricity applies for all the other services basically. Water, again, you only do want to have the number of pumping stations that you actually need. As you can see, I'm barely in the green region. Same goes for the sewage treatment. You could save some money with the sewage treatment by actually just building the water drain pipes instead of the water treatment plant or instead of the other Green Cities DLC, you know, purification facilities that are way more expensive because again they are green so yeah you want to only have what you need and then put it at 100 percent because that's where the most efficient production is all right move on when it comes to garbage it's again kind of similar you only do need what you what you actually use and you can easily tell by just clicking at for example the incineration plants and you can just tell how many garbage trucks are in use. In here we have only 10 out of 27, 9 out of 27. Uh, again, 9 out of 27 for this one and only 4 out of 27 on this one. So easily I'm going to turn this one off. Also, don't be afraid of actually building landfill sites because they are kind of effective. They are actually very, very cheap to, uh, to maintain and they do provide a lot of garbage trucks for that price. Obviously, the downside of this is that from time to time you do need to empty this building to the incineration plant. But that's kind of a small price to pay. The incineration plants are definitely very expensive. And again, just like with all the previous buildings, just keep it at 100% budget and that's going to be the cheapest to maintain. I'm definitely repeating myself here, but this applies for healthcare, fire departments, police departments, education as well. Keep it at 100%, that's going to be the most efficient and only have the buildings that you actually need. Now, as you can see, I am spending a lot on healthcare and that is because where you can really bleed a lot of cash is on crematoriums. As you can see, crematoriums are actually kind of expensive, 720 a week, and that's a lot. Similarly to the garbage, you don't be afraid of building cemeteries. They are very cheap and they provide a lot of hearses. But obviously, you from time to from time to time you do need to empty the cemetery into the crematorium. But I highly recommend that you download some mod that kind of rebalances the death waves or gets rid of them. For example, the life cycle rebalance mod, and that's actually going to allow you to lower the number of crematoriums in the city and that's going to save you a lot of money when it comes to hospitals you don't actually need that many of hospitals because people don't really call ambulances that much if we look at the view of the city then uh, sure i do have the coverage but as you can see i don't have that many hospitals for example for this area i only have like a big hospital and that's fine you don't really need to overdo it with hospitals same applies for fire departments you don't really need that much coverage the fire trucks will easily reach even the buildings that have you know the orange or red color on this view and the same applies for police stations as well even for schools you don't actually need to have the coverage the entire coverage of the city because people will just go to schools you know they can just cover the distance to school really easily you only want the number of schools to fit the number of eligible students in the city for all the three uh, levels of education. Obviously, this depends on you. If you don't want to have university educated people, just don't build that many universities. But again, don't be tempted to put this anywhere else than 100%. If you don't want that many hospitals or that many ambulances, just turn off some hospitals or turn off some crematoriums. Or fire department, school, etc. All right, just keep it at 100% and turn off or destroy the buildings that you don't need. Parks are exactly the same. 
Just build the number of parks that you actually need, don't overdo it with parks and keep the budget at 100%. That's all you need to know with the parks. Obviously, you don't want to maybe put the entire city to these, uh, you know, bluish colors. You might want to have some areas with uh, like different colors. That's all up to you. I do try to keep my city satisfied with, uh, with the parks. Obviously, some areas are not finished. Um, some of these are parking lots. They are not actually parks. They don't really work as parks. Also, parks do attract some tourists. But again, only build what you need. Keep it at 100%. Now, unique buildings is kind of up to you. I do want to keep my unique building budget to 50%. And it is kind of goes against what I just said, that you want to keep it at 100, everything at 100 to make it more efficient. But when it comes to unique buildings, they don't actually do anything, pretty much. They only attract tourists and provide some entertainment for your own citizens. But you can easily do that more cheaply by just building more parks instead of unique buildings. And tourism, it doesn't really do anything in this game. Sure, you're going to get more tourists into your city, but the tourists are definitely not going to uh, make up for the costs, the maintenance costs of the, of the buildings. The tourists are definitely not spending a lot of money in your city. But at the same time, you kind of do want to have some unique buildings. For example, you want to do some achievements or you want to actually build some monument buildings, like, for example, the fusion power plant that I just uh, showed you before. All right, so let's move to public transport. As I said, I'm not going to talk about the placement of public transport lines. That obviously is connected to how much money can you save on a public transport, but that's up to you, or maybe I'm going to do a separate video about that, about how to make an efficient public transport network. But Let's talk about how you can actually save money on the lines. So as we can see, we have a monorail line in here. And I do highly recommend that you download a mod that's called Improved Public Transport so you can see all these uh, statistics. Well, you can see these in the vanilla game, but in here you have actually much greater control of adding or removing individual vehicles from the line. Now let's analyze this. So as you can see, the stations, the people waiting on the stops, there are not that many of them. And some of the trains or the monorails are actually running not that, uh, you know, full to 100% capacity. So this is actually fine. And I do have this line balanced. If I had vehicles that are running at below 50% capacity, for example, all the time, I would definitely remove some vehicles from the line. Or if I had like a huge number of people waiting at the stops, then I would add the vehicles. But again, only the amount that I actually need, only the number of vehicles that I really do need. When it comes to the budgeting of the transport lines or the public transport lines, again, just leave it at 100% because you don't really want to touch this. If you want to do some changes, then either use the improved public transport mod to add in or remove individual vehicles or if you are playing vanilla just uh, adjust the budget uh, manually for each individual line. Another very important thing is to only use the type of transport that you can use to transport effectively, efficiently the number of people that you have you know from point A to point B. Now what do I mean by that? If we look at this situation, for example, this is a urban area. This is pretty much the like a second city center. And there's a lot of people wanting to go to commercial districts, to, you know, offices and home to residential districts. But this uh, metro station is acting as kind of a transport hub and the rest of the people like coming from the metro station are using these uh, buses now. This bus line already has the budget increased to 140%. It's still not enough. A lot of these buses are running completely full and there's still like 300 people waiting on that particular stop, this one. Now, this means that I would need to increase the budget, you know, the, the number of vehicles to this line to maybe close to 200, even over 200%. That would mean that this line would be extremely inefficient. Why? Well, because buses 
individual buses actually have very similar maintenance costs to all the other uh, transport types like uh, the individual cost maintenance cost of a bus is similar to maintenance cost of a metro or a train or a monorail or even a tram so you only need to use the correct transport type to transport the number of people that you need to transport so if you are in some kind of a downtown area where there's you know a lot of people then just use monorails metros and trains and if you are in some kind of suburban areas or you know countryside then you can easily just use buses and it's going to be all right so the bottom line is that every time you encounter these issues with your bus lines or tram lines when you have like a lot of people waiting on one stop wanting to go somewhere then instead of just spamming more and more buses increasing the budget for that one particular line just try to use a different type of transport like in here I would probably just extend this metro line from this station to where these people want to go and it's going to fix it and I might even completely get rid of that bus line and it's definitely going to be much cheaper all these people can just be transported by fewer number of metros than buses obviously because of higher capacity I'm now going to talk about the infrastructure but it's going to be kind of uh, going into the public transport uh, area as well so let's start with this very important explanation of how elevated uh, surface and underground infrastructure or roads railroads work so if you build like for example this road this uh, basic two-lane road as you can see here it costs 0 0.32 uh, a week so if I create just like a 10 unit long road it's going to cost me exactly 3.2 obviously very straightforward but if I would make an elevated one again 10 units then as you can see the construction cost is 1060 so it's actually more expensive the construction cost here costs only 400 and for the elevated it actually costs more than twice that amount and that ele that higher construction cost actually is actually means that the upkeep or maintenance cost is also going to be higher by that same amount so almost twice or more than twice for elevated keep that in mind now also if I'm going to go underground and create again 10 unit road then I'm going to pay for it 2400 which is six times more than just the surface road six times more and that's a lot so this applies for roads like I said but this also applies for all the tram tracks this also applies for the train tracks but this obviously does not apply for the metro tunnels the metro tunnels are actually very very cheap but I'm going to get to that later let's just talk about the roads first so let's open the budget tab and again I'm going to have the roads at 100% if you are not using the maintenance road maintenance or the snow dump services then moving this around is not going to change this number at all but what is going to change this number is the number of roads that you have in your city so let's talk about that expenses in my city connected to roads or you know road networks are very very high 35,000 a week now considering that the total expense is 200,000 that is a very high number now why is that well the city is really huge and as you can see I'm using a lot of I, I built a lot of uh, highway interchanges and I just do have very extensive highway network and road network all around the city now I suppose that you might have this as well if your city is like moderately big but a way to actually you know lower these expenses as, as I said these, this is a very high number is to only use the highways and roads that you actually need if we look at for example the turbine interchange that I showed you how to build in the previous tips and tricks or two previous tips and tricks I think then you might have noticed that I was using the four lane roads 
for these main directions. Now, since then, I updated those, upgraded those, or downgraded actually, to only the two lane types. And that is more than enough. As you can see, the capacity is more than enough. I also upgraded this highway, which is not really that used. I only have it here, you know, for future expansion of the city. And again, don't be afraid of using just the two lane highways if the capacity allows it, obviously. I'm probably going to up upgrade even these uh, three lane highways into two lane configurations. As you can see, the three lanes are not even used. And this actually makes a whole lot of difference. As you can see, if I click the highways, then the differences are really, really big. The two lane highway, the two way highway, wait, well, actually that's not it, this one. The two lane highway costs 0 0.8, while the three lane highway, which is um, this one, costs 0 0.96 and then the four lane is 1.28. So the differences are actually quite massive. And also the differences are quite massive when it comes to the sound barriers. The sound barriers are really expensive and you don't really need them. If you zone carefully, if you don't put residential buildings next to highway, then there's obviously no need for sound barriers on any of your uh, highways in the city. Also, when it comes to the insides of the city, just try to use the cheapest roads possible. Just try to use the basic, uh, basic two-lane two uh, roads like these. When it comes to the uh, four lanes, I just use these because I like them more, but you can just use the basic ones. Try not to use the six lane roads, only where you actually need them. I think in the future I will probably convert these into four lanes as well, because I don't need them. Also, try not to build that many highways, try not to build that many highway exits, highway interchanges. For example, in here I had a highway that connected uh, all the way here, I destroyed that because it was not used just yet. I will rebuild it once I expand the city into this direction. But so so far, it was just kind of a dead weight. It was just eating money, but not really being used. So that's what you want to do with your roads. Try to limit the number of highways, highway interchanges. Only use the number of lanes that you actually need. Also, when it comes to roads, Try to limit the number of roads that are elevated or underground, especially try to stay away from underground, long underground car tunnels. Because as I said earlier, the underground connections cost six times more for maintenance and even the building costs. So they definitely are kind of a black hole for money. If you don't really need to, then don't create tunnels. Pretty much the same thing applies for trains or railroads as well. As you can see, I'm spending a lot of money on trains. This is due to the fact that I actually created the train depot in this location that doesn't really do anything. It just looks nice. So that's why I do spend a lot of money on track maintenance. But the same rule applies for the road networks. Don't create tunnels that much if you don't need those tunnels and don't create elevated railroads as well. For example, let me do a comparison. If I was to, correct, uh, to connect like the passenger stations underneath the city downtown using railroads or train tracks, then as you can see, it costs roughly one, uh, one, cell, one, one, one cell per week maintenance cost. So if I was to create an underground train tunnel, then it would cost me six times more, so six. But it would be much cheaper to just do a metro system underneath the city because the metro tunnel only costs 0 0.64 and that's already, you know, underground. So it's more than six times cheaper than underground railroad. So every time you want to do some kind of an underground passenger connection, build a metro instead of trains or anything else. Also, if you want to do some kind of an elevated, you know, above surface uh, passenger lane or line, use monorails because again, monorails are already elevated and they are much cheaper than elevated railroads. 
So only keep railroads on the surface. If you want to go underground, you know, extensively underground, just use metros instead. And if you want to go elevated, just use monorails. Now, other expenses for the railroads are connected to cargo transport. Now, this is obviously not really going to give you any money back, but instead it's going to alleviate some traffic problems connected to cargo transport in your city. So that kind of is worth it. Now, cargo train station or cargo train terminal costs a lot of money. So you definitely don't want to have these everywhere in your city, on every corner. Try to limit the number of cargo train terminals to a bare minimum and just put them exactly where you need. The cargo trucks definitely do use these cargo train terminals a lot, so you don't need to have that many of the terminals around your city. Just like with the cargo train terminals, also the passenger stations are kind of expensive. This uh, main train station in the city costs 1040 a week. That is a lot. So what you definitely want to do is to try to limit the number of train stations, monorail stations around your city. They are actually not that expensive, at least not that expensive compared to the cargo train terminals, but they definitely eat a lot of cash every week. And every time you create these high capacity lines, which means trains, monorails and metros, you definitely don't need to have the stations like on every corner again. They can be spaced quite, you know, generously or, you know, the, quite the opposite actually. They can be spaced with the greater distances between them and the people will do just fine. You can then fill in the spaces, the spaces between these stations with, for example, buses or trams and it's going to be very cost effective. Let's move on to incomes. I think I already set very basic guidelines for trying to get your budget down when it comes to infrastructure and public transport, but obviously this is going to be all up to you or up to your experimentation with your city, with your configuration, with your build style. I just gave you some basic guidelines on how to do this. So let's talk about incomes now. When it comes to incomes, my number one advice is to build a football stadium. Football stadium is a great source of income. You're going to receive a lot of cash from the sales of tickets. And also, if, you're, if your team wins, then it's also going to give you a lot of cash. I don't really do any of these, uh, like, you know, services during, during the matches. And definitely, this is a very nice cash injection that you can receive from time to time. Sure, the football stadium costs a lot of money, but it definitely pays for itself. So if you want to have some higher incomes, build a football stadium. Very big source of income are the commercial zones. So you definitely do want to build all the commercial zones that you can according to your demand in the city. As you can see, I'm making like uh, 31,000 uh, per week from the commercial zones. I'm obviously making a lot more from uh, from uh, residential areas, but I do have way more residential buildings than I have commercial. Compared to just single building, commercial buildings definitely make a lot of money. Office buildings, on the other hand, don't make a lot of money at all. In here, we basically see that I have like twice as much money from offices than industrial buildings, but I definitely have at least maybe five, six times more office buildings in my city. So office buildings do make very little money or they do very, they generate very little tax money. The industrial buildings on the other hand are kind of all right. You do want to have industrial buildings in your city. You definitely don't do want to have industrial zone, not only for taxes, but also for, you know, production of goods that you can sell in your city. But if you do, for example, oil specialization, then you can really generate a lot of tax income from your industrial buildings. Now, when it comes to policies, don't be afraid to have your public transport system paid for by citizens. You can even do the high ticket prices, because if your public transport system is very 
nice, very nicely created, then you don't really need to care for this. And people will gladly use the public transport even though it's kind of expensive. When it comes to all the other policies and specializations, I'm just doing recycling here. I suppose I could turn this off, but I'm kind of afraid that the city is going to turn into a garbage pile. I'm using the recreational use because, again, mod uh, moderately increased tourism, sure, but slightly increased tax income. It's actually kind of significant. And the high ticket prices, like I said, I don't have any other uh, policies that would make me lose money like for example the fire safety you know the fire detectors smoke detectors whatever it's called don't really i don't really need to do any of that so when it comes to policies don't be afraid to make your citizens pay a lot more for your public transport unfortunately tourism in this game generates very little cash as you can see here i'm not really receiving that much money from tourists even though I do have like moderately high number of tourists in the city, like 2,000, in my opinion, that's actually kind of all right. I suppose it's going to go up uh, if I build like the space elevator, obviously, or the airport. And also it would go up by like 500 if I put the unique buildings budget to 150%. But in my opinion, that's not really worth it. And it's definitely not going to pay for itself with the tourism income. As you can see, tourism income or the leisure income, really negligible. So you're not going to receive a lot of money from tourism. And in my opinion, it's not even worth like trying, really try harding to increase the number of tourists in the city. It's just not worth it. And if you are trying to save cash, don't do it. So that was it. I just gave you some my observations and my experience with the game, with how you can save money by adjusting your budget by just you know placing the roads that you need placing the public transports that you need and stuff like that you are obviously going to have to experiment a lot on your end and see what works best for you obviously like saving a lot of money in this game kind of goes against you know making your city uh, look nice if you want to make your city purely functional you're obviously going to save a lot more money by doing that instead of making it look nicer by placing more unique buildings and stuff like that so again i just told you some basic guidelines basic uh, like tips on how to save money in this game hopefully it's going to be useful to you and you're going to generate some nice profit with your city i thank you for watching stay tuned for more videos and as always if you want to see me build this city live then check out my twitch channel in the video description until next time, take care and goodbye.